New for you at noon, North Dakota Superintendent for Public Instruction Kirsten Basler issued a statement today about the domestic assault incident she was involved in over the weekend. Hi everyone and thank you so much for joining us this Monday afternoon. I'm Kyle Bosch. Now in the statement, Basler says that an argument caused her to fear for her safety early Sunday morning and that problems had been escalating for months. Basler posted bond last night after being arrested and jailed for allegedly assaulting her fiancé during a fight. Bismarck police say they got a call about a domestic disturbance around 2 Sunday morning and found Baszler's fiancé, Todd Chosick, with a visible injury and dried blood on his face. Now, he told police Baszler had assaulted him. Also new for you at noon, Valley News Live has confirmed Brian Jourdain is being held in connection with a murder in Bemidji, Minnesota. Investigators say Krista Fisherman was found with multiple stab wounds Friday night. Emergency crews tried to stop her bleeding, but she later died at the hospital. Jordan, who is 25 years old, is being held in the Beltrami County Jail on a charge of second-degree mur murder. Formal charges may be filed tomorrow. Now, the courts are closed in Bemidji today because of the President's Day holiday. Bemidji Police, the Beltrami County Sheriff's Office, and the Minnesota BCA are involved in the investigation. A Moorhead man is in serious condition after being hit by a car on, the I on an I-94 ramp. It happened a little after 5.30 this morning near 8th Street South and I-94 in Moorhead. The Minnesota State Patrol says Tristan Dozier was hit on the entrance ramp to westbound I-94 as the vehicle was accelerating to merge onto the highway. Dozier was transported to Essentia Hospital. He's currently listed in serious condition. Well, we picked up a little light snow overnight, and that will start blowing around later this afternoon. Let's check in with meteorologist Robert Hahn, who has a first look at our forecast. Yeah, we'll see a cold day today, but today's temperatures will actually be the warmest we will see until Friday, once we start seeing some uh, colder air move on in as we head through the overnight hours tonight and into your Tuesday. Right now, some single digits and some teens out there, 7 in Bedette, 9 Roseau and Thief River Falls, 13 in Fargo and Grand Forks. The winds... Out of the northwest, 10 to 20 miles per hour with an occasional stronger gust. That is creating some wind chills as cold as a minus 2 in Grand Forks. 3 below here in the uh, Fargo-Moorhead area. Minus 6 in Detroit Lakes and minus 9 in Fergus Falls. On the radar, not seeing a whole lot, but we do have a chance for a few flurries as we head through this afternoon and this evening. The further west you go, the better the chances for that uh, chance for some flurries. As Kyle mentioned, with the fluffy nature of the snow, the uh, winds that we have out there again, that is picking up a little bit of that snow and blowing it around today. About 15 degrees tomorrow, only three. Once we go below zero Tuesday night, doesn't look like we're going to get above zero until sometime on a Thursday. A look ahead at some of the coldest air we've seen in the season, as well as some continued chances of snow. All that here in just a few minutes. All right, Robert, we will see you then. The former head of the FM Convention and Visitors Bureau is running for Fargo City Commission. Cole Carley retired as the head of the CVB three years ago after more than 20 years in the hospitality industry. Carley lists public safety and public health, wise growth in housing, and dealing with water issues among his top priorities. A lot of people think that the diversion is a kind of a foregone conclusion. It's not. We've got miles to go before we dig miles and miles. So that's something that we need to work on and, and dedicate ourselves to. Uh, but the other issue with that is keeping it in our taps. We are overdue for a long drought. And I'm not talking about a drought of a summer or two. I'm talking about several years worth of drought. And when that happens, and it will happen, we are ill-prepared for it. Now, Carly's entrance into the race means that six people are now running for the Fargo City Commission in the April special election. Now, one man may be responsible for what was a rash of car thefts over the weekend. In total, nine cars were stolen in Cass County, three of them in South Fargo. Police think that the man is targeting cars that people have left running to warm up with the doors unlocked and the keys inside. Police are looking for a bald white man in his mid-30s who was last seen in the Frontier neighborhood. Call Fargo Police if you have any information. The Federal Aviation Administration has proposed a set of rules for small drones. The preliminary rules would allow unmanned aircraft under 55 pounds to perform common tasks for commercial purposes. The aircraft, however, would not be allowed to fly at night, close to airports, or out of the operator's sight. The FAA says the final rules are still probably two to three years away. The Minnesota State High School League says there may be further punishment for five Minnesota dance teams disqualified from a state competition this weekend. 
The teams refused to take part in the award ceremony, saying the winning team from Faribault copied their routine from a team in Utah. Now, the Faribault head dance coach says her team did take inspiration from the other team's dance, but did not copy it. Now, the Minnesota State High School League says an investigation concluded Faribault had not plagiarized the routine, and they will further investigate what happened during the award ceremony. The city of Moorhead will have a firearm safety class available to the public next month. The classes will be held every Tuesday evening, March 10th through April 7th. It goes from 7 p.m. until 9 p.m. at the Robert Asp School in Moorhead. There will also be a final day available on Wednesday, April 8th. That's from 3 to 5 p.m. The cost is $5, and it's for ages 11 and older. Registration will be March 10th at 6.30. A parent or guardian does have to show up with the child and also bring a copy of their birth certificate. One of two dogs that went missing in January and sparked a controversy on Facebook has been reunited with his family. Stephanie Olson says Murphy came home this weekend. Olson found her dogs up for adoption on the For Love of Dog Rescue website after they ran away from home. Now She claims that the rescue told her that they had split the dogs up and adopted both of them out and would not be returning the dogs to her. Now Olson tells us she was able to work it out with For Love of Dogs and her family did get Murphy back this weekend because he was never actually adopted. As we mentioned, that story definitely sparked conversation on our Valley News Live Facebook page, and you can always join that by liking Valley News Live on Facebook. You'll also be able to follow the latest news, weather, and breaking news updates anytime on your feed. Just search for Valley News Live, like the page, and stay informed all day long.